Good morning. I will be the moderator for this class. Today is Thursday, January 4th, 2024. Class, you have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class so as not to disturb the class or the speakers. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. 
Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The ten primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law, so law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Uh, this morning, we will begin with a prayer by Dr. Andre McDaniel. We will have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen. Our scripture lesson is uh, 2 Timothy, all four chapters to be read by Dr. Lenore Allen. And our readers for today's session are Dr. Deborah Van Hook and Dr. Jackie McCain. May we have our prayer, Dr. Good morning, class. May we all bow our hearts and our minds in thanking Yahweh for allowing us to wake up with his name on our hearts and minds this morning, for plucking us out of this world and sitting us down and having us learn about him and learn how we can join him after we take off this flesh father we thank you for the mercy for the love for everything that 
you have bestowed on us that we do not know that we had needed, but you have still gave it to us for stuff that we asked that we did not need and you still gave it to us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us closer to a new year and keeping us together and keeping Yahshua first in our hearts and our minds. We ask that you keep us together through this perilous times when the world does not know what's going on and is just getting more wickedly and evil as this world gets rushed and busy and busy. Please put it on our hearts and minds that we will always take the time to honor and learn and love you. Father, we thank you. We ask these blessings in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Um, this morning, I wanted to sing something um, that we used to sing when I first came to class, and it's from Psalms 121. I was glad when he said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of Yahweh. I was glad when I heard his true name. I was glad when I heard his true name. I was glad when I heard his true name. Let us go into the house of Yahweh. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of Yahweh. Um, and today I wanted to read the, the scripture reading in 2 Timothy 1, 2, 3, and 4, because the reason that I'm doing this is because when I was reading the beginning of the transcript to Dr. Kinley was in his last days and he was sharing this gospel and trying to prepare us for um, going over into a, a new creation. All the things that he had been through and all the warnings and the admonitions he was giving us. And I can also see that Saul or Paul wrote this to Timothy and he was he's going to be encouraging and talking and and telling timothy to please you know stay stay in the the the, the course that he's going and you can see that there is a correlation through what saul is going through and also what dr kinley is going through and then to be very real to things that people go through in this world today things that you were going through but he talks about he's fought the good fight and we have to do the good fight also so I'm going to start with 2 Timothy 1, and we're going to be reading 1, 2, 3, and 4. Saul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh, according to the promise of life which is in Yahshua the Messiah, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from Yahweh the Father and Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. I thank Yahweh, whom I serve from my for forefathers with pure conscience that with these without ceasing I have remembrance of thee and my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I am persuaded that in thee also wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of Yahweh, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For Yahweh hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Savior, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the evangel, according to the power of Yahweh, who hath saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Yahshua the Messiah before the world began. 
but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who hath abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Wherefore, I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the nations, or the Gentiles. For this cause, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. The good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Spirit, which dwelleth in us, that thou this thou knowest, that all they that which are in Asa be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. Yahweh, give mercy unto the house of Osiphorus, for he refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Yahweh grant him that he may find mercy in that day. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Two. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahshua the Messiah. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahshua the Messiah. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, Yet it is he, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruits. Consider what I say, and Yahweh give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Yahshua the Messiah of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my evangel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of Yahweh is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Yahshua the Messiah with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we also live, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before Yahweh that they may strive, not about words to no profit, but to the subverting to the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more unrighteousness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overflow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh stands sure, having this seal, Yahweh knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and suitable for the master's use and prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace with them that call on Yahweh out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patience, and meekness, instructing those that are opposed. 
perhaps Yahweh will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth. And they, and they may recover themselves out of the snare of the adversary who has taken captive, who are taken captive by him at his will. Three, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of them, of those that are good, trady, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yahweh, having a form of the worship of Yahweh, but denying the power thereof. From such Turn away, for of, of this sort are those which creep into the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with various lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janies and Jambres withstood, Mo, withstood Moses, so did these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all Yahweh delivered me, yea, and all that will live in fear of Yahweh shall suffer persecution. I'm going to read that again. Yea, and all that live in fear of Yahweh shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou and the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned of, learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. All scripture, all the scripture that is given by the inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of Yahweh may be perfectly, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Four, I charge thee therefore, I charge thee therefore, I charge thee therefore before Yahweh and the Savior Yahshua the Messiah, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which Yahshua, who was the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present age, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatians, Titus unto Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. 
take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is very useful to me for the ministry. And Tychitus have I sent to Ephesus, the cloak that I left at Troas and Carpus, which when they cometh, bring with thee, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander, the carpersmith, did me much evil. Yahweh reward him according to his works. Be thou wary of him also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At first, at my first offense, no man stood with me, but all men forsook, forsook me. I pray that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, Yahweh stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all nations might hear and that all gentiles might hear and i was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and yahweh shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom we glory forever and ever salute priscilla and aquila and the household of Osiphorus, Aretas abode at Corinth, but Trophonus have I met at Militum sick. Do thy best to come before winter, Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. The Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, be with thy spirit. Grace be unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 We thank everyone for their participation. I will now turn this back over to our house, Dr. Lenore Allen. Okay, I just, I, I, I guess you can see how inspiring those words were. And then as we read um, what Dr. Kinley says, you will see that there is a, a direct correlation. And I'm sure like in your own lives, there's a direct correlation of what's going on with your lives also. So um, that's what I wanted to share today. Um, does, does anybody have a, uh, I like I like to, I'm more informal than other places. I'm sorry, that's the way I am. I want people to be able to, if your heart is filled up and you got something to say, I want you to have a chance to say it. So is there anyone that would like to say something about that, that scripture that we read? I would just like, good morning. Good morning. I would just like to say that you read that with expression <laughs> felt like i mean i really felt it you know what i mean so um all praises to yashua for that mm -hmm. anybody else have anything to do if if not we can go right into um dr kenner's last lecture and the importance of coming to school and being obedient and i'm just going to say this and you can, um, you know, some some of us uh, have have classes that are available to us um, now. It's nice to just sit in your house and do the Zoom, but sometimes you have to go out and you have to deal with people. And I would just encourage you, if you have that opportunity, to 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 go to your classes because you feel you may feel that you know there's you know problems and everything but if you go you are a witness to show that you believe in this teaching and it is very encouraging i mean we have a class we've got like sometimes like five or six people you know sometimes we get up to 13 people but i am always very glad to see the people gathering together and i i know people feel like oh i can just stay here and watch no Go out there, encourage other people, come, sit down. If you're early, get out, open your book and start reading something until they come. But Dr. Kinley did go to class, and this is what Mitch told us, because I the, the, you know, people you know, don't come to class for some reason or another. I've done it myself, so I can't get on anybody's case. But um, uh, people felt like they didn't have to come to class anymore because they had learned a lot or they didn't get along with the people i'm not talking about the doctrine is just junky yeah you gotta go but if you got a place where they're teaching it it's, it's worthwhile to come and so mitch would say to us what do you know that the founder didn't know because he didn't miss class 
you know, he was always there. And Freddie Allen described that he was sitting there in the second row. And that when Freddie talked about Freddie Allen Jr., who was the dean of Albuquerque, he said that when he would get up to speak, he would see Dr. Kinley sitting there looking at him attentively. And he always made it his business to try to, when Dr. Kinley passed, to still try to preach that gospel the same way he would preach it when Dr. Kinley was sitting right there. So the classes are opening up again. And if you have an opportunity to go and to be uh, a encouragement to the other people, like if you're doing, they're always late, then you be on time. And then you show them, this is what, this is what righteousness looks like. I'm going to demonstrate. I don't have to talk about it. I'm going to do it. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, anybody have anything else to say? And then we can start reading. I have a comment, Dr. Allen, if I may. Of course. I am happy that you made that um, observation and, in, and the encouragement for a person's brethren. If they have a class, an in-person class that they can attend, and I emphasize this, please attend. Yes, COVID, um, Yahweh has lightened up the load, as to, so to speak, and we are able to assemble. You know, here in the Bahamas, I'd like to share this. I wish that the brethren, or I should say, those who have been attending class from the beginning, I wish that we still had a class here. I have talked with the, um, those that um, I could reach and encourage them to let's meet again. COVID is over for the most part. It's over, let's meet. But people are into their own thing and um, it's sad for me. It's very sad because if there is ever a time that we need to get together, it's now. And if you're able to attend an in-person class, brethren, do so. I'm so glad when I have an opportunity to go to Florida because we are not meeting here. And yes, I love the Zoom classes, but I also like to attend in-person classes. You know, but suffer it to be so. And that's why I'm on these Zoom. No, well, that's one of the reasons I'm on these Zoom classes because I like to hear this gospel of Yahshua Messiah preached. And um, Father, I, I tell you, I, I just love attending and learning and sharing. So, Please be encouraged, brethren. If you have a class you can attend, please do so and attend. Thank you for that, um, Dr. Allen. I really appreciate you doing that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Joshua. Jackie, did you want to start with the first five? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Last lecture and importance, coming to school and being obedient. Thank you ever so much. Oops. Wait a moment. Um, Dr. McCain, could you let them people know that you have a copy that has, um, uh, it, it wasn't uh, unadulterated. They didn't take things out and everything and they're gonna read it like that. So just to let the people know, okay? Appreciate it. Okay, this transcript that I'm reading from is Sunday, December the 21st, 1975, 1040 South Grand Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 7 o'clock p.m. And Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. And then it just goes in, thank you ever so much. Where is that? Oh, okay, thank you. All right, right here? Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you ever so much. As usual, I'm glad to be here before you. I would not have been here tonight had it not been important. I didn't sleep last night to amount to anything at all. And those of you that sat close and around about me this morning 
you seen that I went to sleep in school sitting right in that chair. Now, I want to tell you the reason why I didn't sleep. The reason why I didn't sleep was because there's a message that's supposed to be conveyed unto you that you possibly might overlook or misunderstand or take it like you do some other things, which it is vitally important. I am aware of the fact that these things are done, not purposely, but uh, because it's just simply that way. I'm going to tell you in the offset, in a way that you can understand about both of the things that I want to say to you. And I want you to bear in mind, keep it in mind, then I want you to be obedient to the things that I'm going to say to you. Don't just take it lightly. Go ahead on because it might not be so well with you. So far, are we, on, are we saying the same thing? Yes. Okay. One of the things I want to say to you is this. Be, cons be constant and regular in your attendance in school. Try to learn all that you can possibly learn. Try to understand all that you can possibly understand because you need it. You need it to keep you steadfast, strong, and not be removed from the faith. The scriptures say, now I want you to read the third chapter, I believe of Timothy, either 1 Timothy or second Timothy, second of what's going to happen in the last days. And if anybody want to know that second Timothy three and 15. Now that's one of the things that we're, this is the second reading, right? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. You want us to read that second Timothy three and 15? You can. Yes. That's what my notes said. I got notes on this while we've been over it before. Okay, very good. Second Timothy 3 and 15. Mm -hmm. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are <clears throat> which are, are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith. Mm -hmm which is in Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Because he was just saying one of the things he wanted to say is to be constant and regular in your attendance. And what we just read in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, he said, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Because, you know, now, you know, the things that, the, uh, that he's sharing with them, you know, just amazing. So um, we, that's should what he said. Four, we should read 14 then. I'm sorry. Okay. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast mm -hmm. been assured of, mm -hmm. knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Mm -hmm. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. See, and that's just like what he did. He Yahweh gave him the divine vision and revelation. So see, we, from a child, we came into this school as babes and we came in learning. And the things that we've learned, because we see now, see at the end of the age, we know Satan's got to appear and he's got to try to deter. So we know from the things that's going on in, in the IDMR itself, you know, you see that. That's why he said, you be steadfast and learn all you can. Dr. Kenley was stressing this back in 1975. He said, because you need it. See, and we know we need it now because see, keeping the faith. And I, I'm sorry, I got off. But yeah, so he said, but continue thou in the things that thou has learned. So that's why we come to this just wanted to bring that out with when he said, be steadfast and be strong. Be, don't be removed from the faith. See, because we know by 
where he done took us all the way back and beginning at Moses and showing you how he brought this group of people out. And see, we're going through that same track. You know, we always say that uh, uh, on that uh, uh, Moses chart that that's taking our picture. So we went from darkness into some light. And so we're still on that track. See, that's why he want us to continue. And I just thought that was a part of uh, what he just, what we just got through reading here. I'm done. I go back to the lecture unless somebody else got something to say. Now that's great, one of the, I'm sorry. Great new, um, great new day, brethren. This is um, uh, Sister Candace Shafi from um, Sacramento uh, by way of uh, Open California. Thank you for uh, what you just said. Um, I'm taking notes and I appreciate you um, being zealous for Yahweh. Have a good day. Praise Joshua. Praise Joshua. What else we got to do? Okay. Now that's one of the things that, now that's one of the things I want you to bear in mind. It don't make no difference how come you come here. If it's possible for you to come, come here, 1040. I want you to bear that in mind and I want you to obey it. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't be standing up here before you now. I like to say this to you too. It was questionable whether or not I was going to get to come to school tonight because every night they take my temperature. My temperature was up tonight and Mary gave me some Tylenol. Then I took another pill that Dr. Harris prescribed for me. And if possible, I said, I'm going to go. So here I am. I'm very weak. And I don't expect to stand here before you too long. I wouldn't even be up here at all if it wasn't important. Just that I want you to take heed. Now, I've already told you about one thing. That's come to school. Be punctual. Do all you can toward getting somebody else to come. Somebody that don't know your family those members of your family that don't know, try to get them to come. Be patient with them, be very careful with them and try to persuade them to come. Now, the reason for that is because now, I don't know whether you paid attention to it or not, see, you can check, you can make your own statement. You don't have to answer to me about it at all. I told you that the Roman Catholics, Jehovah Witnesses, and the Church of God, all of them were looking for the Messiah to jump down out of the sky in 1975. I told you that that would not happen. Now, somebody will say, well, now, he don't know what he's talking about. He don't understand what he's talking about. He's talking about something he believes, something he thinks. Well, that's part of, well, that part of it hasn't happened to you. Harry, you know that. Hasn't I right, sorry. He's talking about something he believes, something he thinks. Well, that part of it hasn't happened. You know that. You don't have to question that. Believe it or not, see? You don't have to be, you don't have to be bothered with that. You know now sitting on your seat that it hasn't happened as of yet. Of, and this year is just about gone. What was she talking about? Okay. Uh, he was talking about that the churches are saying that the creation was gonna to come to an end in 1975. Oh, Okay, okay, and it hasn't happened yet. Thank and you. It hasn't Thank happened you. yet. So he's saying. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just about gone. Okay. Now, this time of year, uh, we have usually what is called a Christmas program. And that's where the scripture was read as it was tonight, see, to call your attention to the birth and life of Yahshua the Messiah. For now, we're too far gone for that for tonight because 
they spent, excuse me, I'm sorry. For now, we're too far gone for that for tonight because they've been reading that for a long, long time and they got that all messed up too. They don't know how to determine the birth of Yahshua the Messiah. And then another thing I want to remind you about, I want to tell you about. I told you in 1961 that after we put that book out, they would be coming around to the place where they would begin to go back to the original Hebrew name of the father. That's English up there on the board but they would go back to it. Now I've got a lot of books around my house, been recently copyrighted with the name Yahweh in it. New books and our work has been circulated all over the world. And this has come to the attention of many of the famous television preachers, the, names of our, the name of our heavenly father. Now, I want to tell you what's happened to them. See, now, because they have went on. I'm talking about Billy Graham, Rex Humbard, Kathleen Kuhlman, man down here, the Indian, Oral Roberts, see, and many of them, see. Now, they are very, very careful not to use none of them names, see even though they have been printed in the book and so forth and so on. Even Jehovah's mm -hmm. Witnesses, I told you that they would be coming up with this name. They never came up with it before until they received our work. So now then, they know Yahweh is correct and still they're too stubborn, see, and they say it's Jehovah, understand? And yet and still, right in the same book, they say that they know that there's no J in the Hebrew language. There isn't until yet, see? But it's Jehovah. It's the best English pronunciation, see, of the name of our Heavenly Father. Nah, that's the best English that's English up there on the board, not Jehovah. That's English up there. That's not Hebrew, see. You understand that now? You want to go over that and show them what they was talking, what he was talking about? Uh, uh. Yeah, we can look at uh, we can look at the uh, the chart. And I just wanted That's to say. My my personal experience is that um, he was saying 1961 the book was um, the textbook was sent out, but mm -hmm. I was I was in Catholic school around that time and I remember the teacher said um, the nun said Sister Raymond Marion that the name of the Creator was Yahweh and it was like fireworks for me. It's like whoa, the Creator's got a name. I didn't know he had a name. And I remember my sister and myself we were in the same room. And we heard it. And when we went home, we talked about it. And we said Yahweh and my mother and father didn't have no problem with Yahweh. And then um, we came back to school. And I said, well, Yahweh, and she said, we don't say that name. So they give it to you with one hand, and they take it back with the other. Um, yeah. so years well, later, they got a Jerusalem Bible, excuse me, they had a yeah, Jerusalem Bible, and they had Yahweh in it, that was a Catholic mm -hmm. imprimatur Bible, that means that they say that it's scripturally correct. That's right. They had a Jerusalem Bible, and now they deny the, the, the Bible, they say you don't have to use it anymore, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But they were, because of Dr. Kinley's vision that he got from Yahshua the Messiah, Mm -hmm. That name started getting going out there, and it it was it was shared with the world. You had something to say? That's right. You said it. so. That's what he was saying. Look up here. He said those are English. Yahweh yeah. Elohim Yahshua, and you see the Hebrew. Yeah. So yeah, he was saying that's. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. the Hebrew letters over here. We have the English letters over here, and the thing that you know when she told me see they had authority 
um, these nuns, they told you something, they told you about God, and you thought they knew what they were talking about. And when she said it, I figured, well, she must know, because they called themselves the brides of, of, of Jesus. So I figure, well, they must know that he doesn't like his name said or whatever, you know, she's married to him, you know, can't get no closer than a husband. So I figured that she would know. Then years later, you find out of everything that have breath, praise Yahweh, that his name is right, been with you from the time you came out of this, into this creation. And that mm. you come forth out of uh, amniotic fluid. Amnion means lamb. So you've mm. been taken you've been taken care of by the lamb of Yahweh. Where else did this water come from? Uh, except from Yahweh himself. You've been taken and cushioned and protected by the lamb since before you knew you were you. So for them to come along and say that the name isn't necessary, it's... Uh, they they have no authority to do that. Mm -hmm. And right. taking from Tetragrammaton, that's what he was saying. He's talking about, they say that Jehovah was the best Hebrew, I mean, was the best English pronouncer. He said, nah. He said, you see that up there? Yahweh. See, Y-H-W-H. And we understand, according to the divine vision Yahweh gave to Dr. Kinley, that we put the A and E, which are the only vowels in Adam and the only vowel in E, picking up that masculine and feminine right within himself in that. So that makes Yahweh. That's English. We can see that and we can pronounce that. So that's what he was stressing out on that. I thought that was pretty. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just to say one more thing. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bonnie, I see your hand. I just want to say one thing. People say, well, I have to have a revelation. This is the revelation. Somebody sitting down and showing you in the, in the Encyclopedia Britannica that this name was never lost. That's the revelation. People are waiting for some woo-woo thing to come out of the sky. No. When, when you read in the book and he says that his name is important, and when you go to the, 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 um, the Ten Commandments, and one of the Ten Commandments is about his name, not to take his name in vain. And when you look up vain, it's like not to make it useless. That's the revelation. That's the veil being brought back. Now, either you believe it or you don't believe it. Uh, yes, Dr. Snyder, you had something to say? Yeah, I'd just like to say, um, I, I got a couple of things, but to, to start out with, I would just like to say when we're reading these things, you know, He's tr he makes it clear that he's trying to get something across this this lecture. He said that he was there, he was sick, but he had a message that he wanted to give us, right? He wanted to give the people that were there. And so we can go point by point and see what the message was. So you already started with, well, the first thing, the first message that he was, come, that come to class, be on time, do, you know, learn all that you can. You know, that was the first part of the message that he's given us. And then the second thing was, He's bringing out the things about the name. So we can see that he's going through point by point the things that he wanted us to know and understand and to keep the way that it was. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to say. I've got some other stuff when we get further down because I had worked on this particular transcript one time years ago and looked up what Dr. Kimley's definition was about perilous times. And it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting to see it through the way that he taught it but anyway that's all i want to say right now thank you okay if anybody else has anything to say just raise your hand we want to hear from everybody well i i, I know that i want to hear too but i just want to make this comment because you were talking about um people want to have a revelation i think that's what you said uh yeah. dr Allen. yes well and that is true what you said but you know, um, when you said that, what resonates with me is this, that yes, truly you do need to have a revelation and want that revelation. But the revelation that you need to receive and should want to have is that revelation happening right within you. Because mm -hmm. the things that is being taught by this divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, going to the law and the prophets and the, using the witnesses and all that, and this gospel, you truly want that to be revealed or should want it 
to be revealed in you. Hallelujah. And that, that is what it's all about. That revelation of Yahshua has yeah. to be revealed in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. That, that's what you want to see. All these yeah. things that we look at the chart, revealed you know, we have to use those charts. We look at the chart, we use the Bible, which is one of the biggest tools, you know, along with the charts, and you are shown how Yash, Yahweh's purpose is coming down through the ages and dispensations, and the gospel is being preached, and all, all of this information that we're getting, yes, we don't want it to be external. We want it to be internal. And that revelation has to happen within you. And that is Yahshua being formed in you. And uh, that's what I wanted to say. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. So he said, that's English up there talking about Yahweh. Okay, that's not Hebrew. You understand that now? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is this, how man in these last days, see, even though they know and all of this information has gone out in all the world, see, they are reluctant to say anything about it, understand? Because they've built up a great following, see, and they are reputable ministers. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. And they think that they're going to continue on that way, you see. And Yahweh will have to put up with it. <laughs> you follow what I'm talking about? Now, what that really means, that means that they're opposed to you. Now, the scriptures, scripture, or the Bible says that they would be like that. Not only that, not only that, I want you to realize this too. The apostle Paul said, even among your own self, see, some of them would raise up and speak pervert things to draw away disciples after themselves, see. Did you know that that was in the book? If you didn't, I have to read it, see. Cause everybody you have to excuse, cause everybody you have to really open up your eyes if you want to be saved, and you don't have no long time to be saved. And we all know that that's taking place right now too, where you have some schools that don't want to preach the gospel. They want to give reverence to Dr. Kinley as their savior, and that's what was said in the scriptures of somebody. I, where's the scripture that says that? But the, they didn't love the truth. Yahweh turned them over to a reprobate. And also, if we can get Romans 1, and when you read on uh, 21 on down from Romans 1, 21 to the end, it's talking about what he just said here, uh, in here, about how um, uh, they build up a great following. You know, we, he's talking about Rex Lombard and all those people out there. But so you bring it home and you see the same thing manifesting in these schools now that people are uh, building up a following. But see, that's why he said <laughs> when he told us earlier, we got to be assured of the things and who we have learned them. So that's what, you know, he's taught. I just thought that was that was uh, a witness there uh, in Romans of what he just talked about. And I can't remember the other scripture where he says that uh, he would turn them over to a reprobate because they wouldn't love the truth. Did you want to, did you want Romans 1 and 20 and 21? If everybody wanted to hear it, yeah. I mean, it would bring out what he just said. Yes, everybody wants to hear it. Okay, I'm okay. going to start. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to start at 19. Because okay. that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. Yahweh have shown it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and 
carnal nature so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Excuse me, you said you skipped something because when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as, as him. Right. right. I'm re I was reading the King James Version instead of holy name. That was well, they even said they glorified him not as God, but they, they didn't glorify him as their creator. Because of that verse 21. 20. Were you going back there? Or did you want you can read 21 again with okay. expression? <laughs> Because that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart, heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim into an in image made like to corruptible man mm -hmm. and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves to change the truth of Yahweh unto a, into a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Mm -hmm. This cause Yahweh gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Mm -hmm. And likewise also the men leaving the natural <clears throat> use of the woman bur burned in their lusts one toward another. Men with men, doing that which is indecent and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was proper. And even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind mm -hmm. to do those things which are not proper being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetedness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, proud, boasting, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, imp implicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the, that <clears throat> do the same, but consent with them that do them. That's terrible. Um, Dr. Burris has her hand up. Yes, uh, and you all excuse me for being so slow, but this uh, that we have just heard uh, takes me back to where we started with Second Timothy. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the verse of 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Mm -hmm. uh, well, starting with 11, uh, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch of Iconium at Lystra. What persecutions mm. I endured, but mm. out of them all Yahweh delivered me. Yes. Yea, and all that will live in fear of Yahweh shall suffer 
persecutions. Now that verse 12, yea, and all that live in fear of Yahweh shall suffer persecution. Yeah. To me, it seems that we should live. We love Yahweh because Yahweh loves us, but we should fear him. Mm -hmm. Just what we just read. And oh, please forgive me, uh, the second Timothy. Uh, not second Timothy, what we just read. What was Romans? What? Yes. Oh, Romans mm -hmm. 1 and 19 through 20. 23, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you want to put it back on the screen, Dr. Allen, or did you want me to read it from the book? No, I want to know. Uh, did, was finish. That... She wasn't finished. Do you have was anything she... else to say? You want to go you back said to Go back to it. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, What's happening? Or 26. We actually started at 25. Okay. Who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and mm -hmm. worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Right. For this cause, Yahweh gave him up unto vile affection for even their women did change the natural use into that which is na against nature. Mm -hmm. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men doing that which is indecent and receiving in themselves that recompense of their era, which was proper. Mm -hmm. And even as they did not like to retain Yahweh, in their knowledge, Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind mm -hmm. to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, mm -hmm. fornication, wickedness, covetedness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisper. Backbiters, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit Commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but consent with them that do them. Thank you. I, I hope somebody saw why I went back to Peter. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Praise Joshua. Thank you, Dr. Burris. Have a beautiful day. And I know the world is is really into like men with men and women and women is like and Steinfeld Steinfeld said a lot years ago. It's not that there's anything wrong with that. Yahweh doesn't like it, you know. Um, he had he had he is male and female within himself. He made the man male and female. Took the woman out of the male, presented it to to him, and they came together and had offspring. And um, when the you can read in the textbook that Dr. Kinley um, has a uh, a lesson and it's talking about you know homosexuality and he's just saying one of the points that was very helpful to me he says when a man and man get together they cannot have fruit when a woman and a woman get together they cannot have fruit they cannot have offspring and the whole point of, of looking that is, is that we are supposed to be being um, overshadowed and given the Holy Spirit and it's causing us to bring forth fruit. 
and if you lay down with anything that is not um that that is not uh of of that holy spirit you will not receive anything and you it will bring about your spiritual death and in in that thing in the textbook he talks about anytime you um lay down with anything that is not of, of, of spirit that is not of truth that is a spiritual fornication and you are a you are a spiritual homosexual so you, people might be led to look down their nose at the homosexual but he's saying you do anything that you're just laying down with the flesh that's a homosexual act and you see what happened all the way back with um lot those people were those people were killed a big lake of fire yahweh just took care of them so mm -hmm. he is not pleased with them and then he talks about all the other things that he's not pleased with that pleased with and if you look at that it makes you get very quiet and say i need a new attitude mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's what i wanted to share anything else mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to add something to that as far as the homosexual, what he showed me is he's the man and we are the bride. And if we make another woman, which we all are, the man, instead of looking to Yahweh, to me, that's homosexuality, spiritually so, because we're looking to a man instead of to Yahweh. So that's what he was showing me and what you had just seen. I'm looking at the homosexuality when we know that we are the bride of Yahshua, but when we turn to another and want to give another, you know, or want to look to another for our hope or for whatever, then you're turning, you know, like that's what we read in Second Timothy, denying the power that is within, you know, turn, what is that Second Timothy uh, 4 and 4, where he said we turn to fables, you know, instead of to Yahweh. So to me, that's a, a form of homosexuality because knowing that you're the bride and he's the husband. And if you put him second to somebody else, you know, because he said, all glory, <laughs> all praise and all glory, he's the one that's giving it all and that's what we want to give it to. So, uh, yes. I don't know how to explain what I'm saying. I hope somebody understands. Yeah, that's, that's very clear. And, and the other thing that I was thinking about is, I said, well, you know, what if somebody who's a homosexual, they can come to, can they come to class? Of course they could come to class. We're all bozos on this bus. All they have to do is sit down and learn. And we don't have to like jump on, well, you're a homosexual. We could say like, you need to know the name of your heavenly father. You need to know about this tabernacle pattern. You need to know how Yahshua came to fulfill. You need to see how much your creator loves you. And I was, I remember a, a speaker said once, and I thought he made a, a good point it's like Yahshua takes care of the inside first and then the outside will take care of itself so we you don't have to like have separate separate seeds and everything else they come in to learn just like we came in to learn and 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 they need correction just like we needed corrections and like we used to say we're all bozos on this bus excuse me Dr. Allen may I add something of course when we look and understand that everything that Yahweh has done is perfect. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything in us to make a decision about what he purposed. He purposed Sodom and Gomorrah so that when we saw it again, we would understand he was declaring the end from the beginning. And for us to understand that when Yahweh shows this to us, that we started in the light and our return home must be in the light everybody has not re re reached that understanding and so if we see it again in the creation we know that yeah they still have a hope to change to come to the light of understanding the difference between the truth and a lie and i don't know if that helped or not Okay, that's good. Uh, Dr. Baker has something to say. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question, and I apologize for my tardiness. I wasn't feeling well, and I fell asleep. Um, um, about the homosexuality thing. Now, mm -hmm. are we talking about in the dispensation 
not in this dispensation, but the in the dispensation uh, um, three, I think it was. And when they were doing that in Romans one, uh, typing. was that an example for us to learn from? And he said they were ignorant. He said the times that that went went ignorance, Yahweh winked at. Mm -hmm. But now has commanded all men everywhere to repent. So does that mean that once you learn of Yahweh, that we're not supposed to do that anymore and repent, and we will be forgiven for that, and he won't wink at that anymore? Just, just a question. Uh, you're, you're looking at Acts, uh, what is it, 17? And 30, I think, 29, somewhere in there. Uh, okay, um, so if somebody want to pick it up from, I guess, wait a moment, uh, 28. Okay. Do you want to move the screen up? For in him we live and move and have our being. And some of your own poets have, have said, well, we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art or man's device can be like the most high. Mm -hmm. And the times of this ignorance Yahweh winked at but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent mm -hmm. because he hath the point of the day in the mm -hmm. which he will judge the world in righteousness mm -hmm. and that man which he hath ordained whereof he hath given proof unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the re resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Mm -hmm. So Saul departed from among them. How be it certain men clave unto him and believed, among <clears throat> the which was Dionysius, an, Arapag an Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Um, I don't know if I'm getting your question right. Homosexual is not right. It's all through the book, Doctor. Um, it's not just Doctor Killing that says it. it. Yahweh says it himself all the, the way through the book. It is not right. And what he's saying here is that yes, he winked at our ignorance because we didn't know. But now, when you come to an understanding, uh, yeah, it's time to drop those things and to follow after him. And he's not going to put anything on you that that he isn't able to take off of you you know what i'm saying so you have hope in yashua the messiah and really that's i mean we all walk in here i mean when you look at that list backbiters malicious and i mean i i, I could raise up my hand to a lot yes 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 yep ding you know all of them but what's going to treat what's going to clean you up learning about yashua the messiah the grace right. of Joshua, that's what causes you to go from death to life. So I don't have to sit around and point my finger at anyone, but you know, that that activity is not correct. It is not um, a, approved of by Yahweh himself. And you gotta, you gotta see him about it. He don't like it. So, right. So, uh, you know, I don't I, have to- I get that part, but I'm just concerned about I'm not saying it's okay because it's it is wrong. Yahweh don't like it, but when he said he winked at it back then, but now since we have the Holy Spirit since the day of Pentecost, we know that it's wrong. So he no longer winks at that. No, you can't get away with that. You got hope in Yahshua the Messiah. That's up to you and Yahshua. You go into your secret closet and you tell him your problems, and he can help you. He can bring you from death to life. I don't have to sit there and point at you and, oh, she's a liar. She's a low liar. She's a, no, Yahshua the Messiah. Keep coming to class. Keep learning. 
he will help you. Um, Dr. Uh, right. Villanueva, he was the one that I was quoting, but I didn't say his name. Dr. Villanueva, Dr. Villanueva, Villanueva has something to say. Yes, Thank Bernie? You. Yeah, so I, in that uh, Yahweh just winked at, you know, in Acts, you know, mm -hmm. it's really talking about worshiping Yahshua, the Messiah, or, you know, in spirit and truth to John 4, 24. They who mm -hmm. worship Yahweh must worship him in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's talking about, you know, Yahweh just winked at because it says uh, there's a, I think it's in Romans, it talks about the Gentiles do by nature the things contained under the law. So they didn't, you know, remember it was given to the Jews and Jews only to start, right? The salvation in some type of way, meaning they had to go to the tabernacle and offer up a sacrifice for sin. And Yahweh just dealt with Israel. See, that was under the first covenant. But because it was all physical and it was going to point and ultimately it points to something spiritual that leads them up to the Messiah. You see all these things that took place with them, the law and Israel and their conduct and everything else. But what Yahweh wanted them to do was he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So it was about worshiping Yahweh, right? And we know that, so what he says, Yahweh winked at because he let them by. He didn't, he didn't destroy the Gentiles. He didn't destroy them. But remember, the promise said that all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when the time came uh, on the day of Pentecost, right, seven, it was given to the Jews and Jews only. But seven years after it comes to Cornelius who is a Gentile, and then they received the Holy Spirit. So now, <laughs> Yahweh, it says, if you read in that 17th chapter of Acts, it says he's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man. That's Yahshua the Messiah. So the whole world is going to be judged by Yahshua the Messiah now. So, you know, there's no more winking. Okay. You see, and that's why it says every man must repent. Well, you repent about, Dr. Kinley said, look, take everything you know to the dump. What he meant was everything you know about your creator, you got to take it to the dump. Mm -hmm. And then you got to learn by the divine vision, divine revelation. And that's going to get you to, that's, if that can't make you fly right, mm -hmm. you know, understanding that the and Holy Spirit can be in right. Then, right, if that can't do it, if understanding that the Holy Spirit can be in you now and you're worshiping and spared in truth and you're looking, you're learning and right of Yahshua mm -hmm. and how and, and him leading and guiding you. And that's the other thing, you know, like um, we can ask questions of ourselves, but it doesn't mean we're going outside our marriage. You see, you're supposed to be married unto Yahshua, the Messiah right and you okay. can now but what happens if you don't have yashua yet Keep and you coming. ask somebody a question are you fornicating are you committing adultery are you no what you're doing is you're learning of yashua dr kin you know you have to have you can go to somebody with the spirit in them and we can even talk amongst each other we're one body but we ultimately go within each one of us to Yahshua the Messiah, we get that confirmation because the truth of the matter is we're all going to have to stand on our own legs. You know what I mean? If you could put it like that. Or on, or on, or what we have been given within ourselves. So if you try to stand on somebody else's thoughts, it's, it's not going to work like that. You have to get it. You have to get that confirmation from within. And you will, if you have faith in Yahshua, he will give it to you. And so he's not winking at the, the way, the old ways of worship. <laughs> so that's what he, all right. Hope that, I hope that helped. Yes, it did help a great deal. And then he said in verse 32, who knowing the judgment of Yahweh that they, which commit such things are worthy of death. Not mm -hmm. only do the same, 
but can consent with them to do them. I uh, see. I didn't. I didn't read that last part there. But okay. Yes, I get it. I get it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Bonnie says we have to stick to the point. Okay. Okay. So, right. So going back to the transcript where Dr. Kelly said. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, even among your own self, see, that's what started this whole conversation. Some of them should raise up and speak even, <clears throat> that's what we got Romans, uh, the first chapter, raise up and speak uh, even among your own self, see, some of them would raise up and speak pervert things to draw away disciples after themselves, see. Did you know that that was in the book? That's in Acts 20, 30, and 31, if you want to get it. <clears throat> And he said, that's in the book. If you did not have it read, because everybody, you have to really open up your eyes if you want to be saved. And you don't have no long time to be saved. That's where we were in the transcript. So Acts 20, 30, and 31. Acts 20. Acts. Did you want to put on the screen or did Acts you want to? 20. And 31. 20 and also of your own selves shall men arise. <laughs> what is it? Acts 20 what? Acts 20. 20 and 30 31. and 31. Acts 20, 30 and 31. Dr. Van Hook is a reader. Sorry, Teresa. Oh, I apologize. I came in late, guys. I apologize. Acts 20 and 30. Also in your own selves shall men arise. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off, Dr. Van Hood. And that's what Dr. Kenley was saying in this lecture. You know, he's warning. That's what he said. He said he had to get up out this sick big to come and share with us. So even in this lecture, you know, he's saying it's in the Bible. So you see, it, it, it's the same Holy Spirit that was in Saul. It's the same Holy Spirit in Dr. Kenley. And we're reading it for ourselves. And hopefully you're receiving it. So that's what I wanted to bring back to where he said, you got to open up your eyes if you want to be saved. See, we got to understand that it took the natural to bring us to the spiritual. Now we're in the spiritual reality of the thing, you know, uh, if that made any sense. But that's what he just read. OK, sorry. Now, I told you about one thing in particular. Now, I want to tell you about another one of the two things that I want to talk to you about. The second thing that I want to talk with you about is this, that you have come down to the place in history and in the time where you must be in a tendency. It's urgent. It's important for you to be in regular attendance and listen to the gospel as it is being taught. And then when you do that with a sincere heart, then Yahweh will give you some wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But until such time, there won't be anything new. Now that's the second thing I want to tell you about, see, that you're right down to the end now where everything you can read about in the Bible is taking place. And see, that's what we just proved. That, that what we just got through reading about uh, 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 how people are going to speak perverse things and how they're going to come up, because we've seen it in the testimonies previously. Uh, whoever that was, they wrote that video saying how they was wrong and they want the IDMR to apologize. You know, see, all these things are taking place but they were already preordained. And then he's even seeing it in 1975. And then we're reading it in our Bible. And we're in 2024. And we're seeing the self-same thing. Yes, we have come face to face with our creator. Now, it's necessary for me to repeat. Is that where I am? Yes. OK. I don't like repetition too well only in a sense, 
Now here's the repetition that, that I'm going to repeat it again. Do you recall that the Roman Catholics that I told you since I've been standing on this floor see, I want you to be mindful of it see. There are 550 million of them in 1961. Now they were looking for the coming of the Messiah in 1975. With them this year is the year of Jubilee, every 25 years, see? Now that's wrong. It should be 50, see? You follow? But now they were looking for the Messiah to come, see, in 1975. Jehovah's Witness looking for the Messiah to come in 1975. The Church of God looking for the Messiah to come in 1975. You follow? Now to repeat something else that I've already stated to you, I want you to take it home. Think it over. I told you that Billy Graham and the rest of them that aren't using these names in their services, see, they're all out there every which way, see. Now, I, now I'll call this the second thing I want to tell you about. I touched on it, some of it. The second thing I want to tell you is this, and then I go on. I haven't forgot that. That is this. Now, don't forget now, I told you the other feller, they believe he was coming in 1975. Don't forget that. And I told you that. No, that won't happen like that in 1975. Now, the second thing I want to speak to you about is about the peace mission that Dr. Trainum told you about this morning. Now, I'm fully conscious and aware, see, some will say this. Well, they have already been over there twice. What do they want to go back again for, see? I don't see any sense in it. Now, I know people will say that, and I don't mean the world out yonder, no, out yonder somewhere. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about in the school. Now, here's why I brought that up. And that was why I couldn't sleep last night. Slept off and on all night long and sat here as I told you in school this morning and went to sleep. Now, the 24th chapter of Matthew is just as important as anything else in the Bible. Now, if you're not, if you're not going to believe that, see, you might as well throw away the whole business, see? You follow? Now, it's been said repeatedly, I'll let you be the judge. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. Listen carefully. I have told you repeatedly for 44 years that I was the man that Yahweh sent in the world in these last days to teach you the truth. I'm the man, the only man. Now, I know somebody will say, now nah, I don't believe that. And that sounds like a lie, see? Well, I've got some news for you. Now, here's the news I have for you. I wouldn't believe it my own self if Yahweh hadn't shown it to me. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it. But now this peace mission is necessary. Now they have told you many times about how the high priest went in and out of this sanctuary on the day of atonement, see? And he went in there three times in the most holy place on that day. This is the third peace mission. See that now? Now, from 1961 down until the present time, see, these true names have been circulated. See, they've gone out all over the world. You can go in bookstores now and just almost pick up almost any book, and you'll find these names in them. See what I mean? Back there in 61, it wasn't like that. Out of all of the preaching that you hear on TV, 
and the radio, I mean the television, none of them won't say anything about these names. I want to tell you something else about that name too. Over in Jerusalem or over in the Holy Land, they know that it's Yahweh. You won't find not one rabbi on earth. You can go right here in Los Angeles, right there on Wilshire Boulevard, and ask them about these names, and they'll all tell you that that's right. They have never been out of the Masoretic text, see? The King James put them in there, Lord, God, and Jesus Christ. They have never been out of the Masoretic text of the Bible. And in some King James versions of the Bible, you'll find those names in the footnotes in your King James version of the Bible. Now, since we have now come to school, try to learn all you can. Give until it hurts toward the peace mission. Now, if you believe, now listen to what I'm saying. If you believe any parts of the Bible, you think it's true, you will do what you can to help this peace mission, this gospel to be spread in all the world. You follow me? Now, since you, pay attention now, since you are the only ones that know anything at all in reality about the truth, then it is imposed or incumbent upon you to see it. You're the very folks that he's talking about in the 24th chapter of Matthew. You're the folks, see, that he talks about to carry this message in all the world. That's powerful, y'all. Now listen. Can we go to Matthew 24? I'm sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand. That's fine. Matthew 24. Go to I reactions. Did you want to start it at 14? Or did you have a sp specific place you want to go, Jackie? I didn't. Uh, that was Candace. Do you want to? She wanted to read the twenty fourth chapter of Matthews, or we can do that for homework, you know. But if, okay, uh, okay, you can, okay. Well, I just wanted to maybe make some sense of it. Why Matthews twenty four was chosen? Twenty four, fourteen, and fifteen. Fourteen, Deborah. Yeah, twenty four, fourteen. I didn't mean that a uh, 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 rule, Candace. I'm just saying it's a lot. The 24th chapter is a whole lot. And it's a whole no, lot. you're fine. You're fine. I did not take it as an insult, as an insult, not at all. So with what okay. Dr. Kelly just said, we're going to start at the 14th verse. And Bonnie, okay, you thank can you. take over, Bonnie. <laughs> and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness <sighs> unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right. So in this gospel, what gospel is he talking about? We're talking about the gospel of Yahshua Messiah that Saul declared in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. He said, moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel. See, the world wants you to think that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the gospel. But we come mm -hmm. into this school and we find out that is just his autobiography. That is not the gospel. The gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And it's all according, I mean, in harmony with the scriptures. What are the scriptures? They are the law and the prophets. That's your Old Testament of the Bible. See, that's what he came in to see. He came in to fulfill what he set up. So, see, in all the scriptures, he said, and this gospel. It's going to be preached. And see, now we know this gospel is being preached. They went on three class, ecclesiastical peace missions. We got brethren in, in our class that Yahweh has made evangelists. They go all over the world and still continue this gospel. See, this thing is real. It ain't no joke. <laughs> and may I ask when they uh, make a statement, uh, when it says in this gospel, gospel also means good news. Yes, indeed. It is good news. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Okay, you're welcome. My, we can go over that 24th chapter if you want to anytime, sister. Praise Joshua. You know I'll be calling. Did you okay. want 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 through 4? Well, that's the gospel. You want to no, read it? Brethren, I declare <laughs> unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, uh -huh. um, which ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. for I preached, <clears throat> for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How wow. that mm -hmm. Yahshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And can I just say one thing about that first Corinthians, Candace, that you notice, he said, how? And see, when we first came into school, we was taught to look up that word, how? And in that yeah. word, how, it means by what name? What name did he die? What name yeah. was he buried? And what name did he resurrect in all according to the law and the prophets? That's what it's saying. That's the Praise gospel. Joshua. Yahshua the Messiah. See, ain't no other gospel but that. <laughs> okay. I'm smiling, y'all. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, if you go to the bottom of your screen on your computer where it says reactions, you can raise your hand there. Have mercy. Bernie has his praise hand Praise Yahshua. Mm -hmm. I think we answered Bernie's question unless he put it up again. Oh. He just never took it down. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. No problem, no problem. I just didn't want to overlook you. Okay. So he said that we're the very folks that it's talking about. So we're here to preach the gospel. That's what our job is now. Now, listen, you know as well as I do, you have religious confusion all over the world. You know you have ecclesiastical confusion or religious confusion. You know you have it all over the world. You know you have political confusion all over the world. They don't know what to do about political associates. You have economic situations and conditions all over the world. Is that right? They don't know what to do about any of it. Ford don't know, Congress don't know, and the UN don't know. They just don't know. Now, what is happening is this. You've gotten down to the place where you have got to be diligent in your search, you see. <laughs> Somebody say something. Excuse me, Bonnie, can you mute? Jackie. Okay. Uh, now, what is happening is this. You've, got, you've gotten down to the place where you have got to be diligent in your search, you see, in order to learn anything. The Apostle Paul says this, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Now, for me to stand up here and say something to you and then can't prove it, see, that's bad. You follow? Now, you don't have no long time to get straightened out. Some of us been in this school for a long time, haven't gotten straightened out yet. So don't you feel too bad about it, see? Apostle Paul said again in Hebrews that you should pay the most earnest heed to the things that you hear. See, Freddie, go ahead and read it. Second chapter of Hebrews. I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten you ought to pay the most earnest heed to the. Now he's talking to the Jews. He wasn't talking to the Gentiles, see, to the thing that you hear. Why so? Least at any time you let them slip, see. Now some of the things that have been told you about this work, you about this work 
you let them slip. Therefore, it's necessary for you to come back to school, catch it up, see? Then when that happens, this is the next thing that happens. A root of bitterness springing up here among you, whereby many be devoured. Read that, would you please? Therefore, we ought to give heed to, excuse me, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Now, you're not going to get away with that, see? Now, you get that learned. You needn't think uh, to bring you back now so you can see what I'm talking about, see? These preachers, because they know that's the true name and they haven't been using them, see? And now they have found out about them. And now they're very careful about not using them. Now, that don't mean that they've gotten away with something. Mm -hmm. Just don't mean that. You follow? Mm -hmm. All right. How shall? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first to be spoken by Yahweh? Begin to be spoken of. Read that again, Dr. Uh, Bev Hook. How shall we escape? if we neglect so great salvation, which mm -hmm. at the first began to be spoken by Yahweh. Did you finish where you were reading? Yes. Yes. We ought to pay strict attention to the things that you hear, least at any time we let them slip. And then comes a root of bitterness. That's in there too, up above there. Now, a root of bitterness, see, springing up. Now, somebody will come along after coming to this school, see. I'm going to call your attention to it. Uh, after hearing these charts explained, primarily raised in this school, been around here a long, long time, come up out of the clear blue sky, say things against that which you have been taught. Now, see, if you haven't learned your lesson, you'll be carried away with it. Well, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. Now, that brings me to say one other thing before we have Dr. Harris read, and that's this. Now, it was said, that you'd have to get away from blood, water, and spirit. Come up off it, blood, water, and spirit. Now, I just want to show you how little the person understood about that, that made the remark that you're going to have, you're going to have to get up off it. In other words, they meant that you're going to have to go on and further than that, than blood, water, and spirit. First, let's see what spirit. The third chapter of 2 Corinthians, I believe the 17th verse. Now, Yahweh is spirit. Now, if you're going to get up off of that, yeah, do you yeah. see that now? They say that what you're going to do for Yahweh is spirit. All right. What else? And where the spirit of Yahweh is. And where the spirit of Yahweh is. There is liberty. There is freedom. There is liberty. You're going to have to get up off blood, water, and spirit. Now you see, you see what you're going to get, see what you're getting off of. Can you see how stupid the statement was? Now I've read it 
I read it out of the book, right? Yahweh, not a spirit, but is spirit. That means that he's the source, he's substance, he's the essence, he's the limits, he's the bounds of everything, conceivable and inconceivable, every known and unknown object and thing in the universe. Now, people will say things like that for self gratification or try to teach you deep, carry, carry you on down into the depths of things. That's what they call themselves doing. Not realizing that that what you're doing, you're making a mess out of it. Now, the thing to do in this school is this, to make things as simple as possible. Now, I used to, Dr. Gross can tell you, if you didn't have an education, although I never went to, no further in school than the sixth grade of elementary school, if you were not educated, and I mean really educated too, you wouldn't know anything at all, all about what I'm talking about. Everything I said was scientific, highly academic. And they used to say to me, Dr. Gross and Dr. Harris and others, when this school was in its inception, they would say this, say, you just open the door a little bit so we can get our foot in now, what they meant was that I used words that they didn't understand. They had dictionaries, unabridged dictionaries. They'd go to the dictionary, so they'd ask me to use. They didn't want their school, want, excuse me, they didn't want their school, the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, to be second to none. Now they really wanted a real education. So when I use those words and all they said, well, doc, uh, well, doc, I'll tell you what I want you, brother Freddie. Alan was one of them say, well, I want you to write something. We don't have no writing. We have nothing but the Bible. I said, Okay, I'll write. So I wrote. <laughs> Listen, now these things that I'm telling you about are important. You may not think so, but they are about 26 pages. And I explained these charts and I brought it back to school and stood up before the class and read it. They began to look around at one another. <laughs> Brother Bass, with a very unspoken, was a very outspoken man. He said, Doc, we don't understand what you're talking about. Dr. Allen, you remember asking me, am I, am I telling the truth about it, Dr. Allen? That's right. They asked me to make this manuscript back Take. and they asked me to take this manuscript back and break it down. I did. Mm -hmm. I had about 50 pages then. And I brought it back and I read it in school. They said, no, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're talking about. And they asked me to take it back and break it down some more. Mm -hmm. And I told them, no. I work for a living, and the insurance company was going to put me on the road. Now, they added a word there uh, where you okay. says no. In my lecture, it says, and I, he, he don't say no. He said, and they asked me to take it back and break it down some more. And I told them that I work for a living, and the insurance company was going to put me on the road. See, he, Dr. Kelly didn't say no in his lecture. You can continue, Jack, if you like. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to bring that point up because you well, know they well, said you know you have some uh when Dr. Allen said you have some verses in yours that we don't have here. 
No, so it I was just order it. So, okay. Oh, I just want me to go back to, I don't know where we are. They asked me to take this. I was just sharing what I was sharing. Dr. Allen had told you at the beginning that right. what she has on the screen and what I have, you know, some it's of different. the words have been left out. So right. I was just going to point out when you said, I told them no in this lecture. Dr. Kenley didn't say I told them no. Oh, no problem. I just didn't know where you wanted me to continue or if you had other words in there. Oh, I'm sorry, we have five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes. I work for a living and the insurance company was not, was <laughs> going to put me on the road. I wouldn't have time to do it. So then Dr. Gross took it over or somebody in the school to Wittenberg University. Mm -hmm. That's a, a Lutheran University. The dean over there, he took a shot at the first page and he didn't get out of the first paragraph before he closed it up. And he told Dr. Gross that he was sorry, was real sorry about it, but he just didn't have the time to do it. To break it down somewhere in the, Dr. Gross told him this. Hmm? Or oh, somewhere in the I was that I was a sixth grade scholar. Mm -hmm. And then he told Dr. Gross, he asked him if I was living. Is he around? Said he's in Ohio. He's due here on the 18th. He says, well, the reason why I asked you is I want to come down and meet that man. I want to meet Meet that sixth grade elementary school scholar that's got all these highly academic words and scientific words. I want to see that fellow. Well, when he came down and Dr. Gross told me, he said, well, he wanted to come down here. He wanted to see you on account of the manuscript. Then that took me to Ohio. So then that afternoon, now you talk about speaking, give him the same words that were in the manuscript. He said, yes, that's that. That's him, what the man probably thought. I didn't say, he did think this. What he probably thought was a group of us had gotten together and wrote it for the school. He said, yes, that's him. Said, he sure is a highly educated man. Not a real good education. Real me, education. Got a real good education. Mm -hmm. Well, that same afternoon, I spoke. I told them that there was going to be a war in, in Korea and the United States would be involved. And some of the members of the press was there. One of them was some, excuse me, one of them was some relation to, indirectly relation to Dr. Gross was there. I believe his name was, well, he didn't have anything to say about it. But now this is what they said. Said, yes, that man is educated and he's smart, but we don't think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but, but he said this, this is, there is going to be a war in Korea within the next 60 days. And the reason why I said 60 days, I went to Springfield one month the next month I was in Cincinnati. And so I said 60 days and I would be back here within 60 days. And when I get back here, they would be fighting. The press said that that, that couldn't be so. The United States is not in the financial position to extend the war or go into a new war. They're not in a position. So when those 60 days were up, 
I come back to Springfield. The press was there. Now, if my memory serves me right, my brother Bob tried to tell you about that a while ago. So they took me down to the Springfield Daily News press. They sat me down and they just gathered around me, ring around me and my brother. And they asked me a lot of questions. They asked me, how did, how did I how did I know that there was going to be a war in Korea? How now, how was I able to determine that with the scriptures? I said, well, it's a long drawn out story, but I've got a question I want to ask you. How did you know that there wasn't going to be one? Hmm. Student body laughed. Well, the reason why they wanted that is because they wanted to put a write-up in the new, in the papers. So the write-up in the papers was just about three or four lines. Biblical orator explains to, pos to possess knowledge of how to forecast wars. That's all they said. I'm sorry, our time is up. Okay. We'll stop there and we're on page 23. 23. Yes, the uh, second paragraph. And mine says seven. <laughs> right. What does yours say, Jackie? Page seven. Page seven. Mm -hmm. page seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we thank everyone who came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. Our Jamaica class is Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say together, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, bless your day. Hallelujah. Praise Joshua. Great class. Everybody have